Welcome back to the lab, folks. Uh, today I'm just going to have a look at this uh, Buck Boost module that I picked up the other day. I showed them to you in a mailbag video, I think two videos back, something like that. And uh, the online where I bought this, it talks about the LM2577, um, which is a, a similar device to this. This is an, an XL6009. And they talk about the LM2577 as though uh, that's what it was made with, but it's not. I mean, it, it, it's a similar device and there's a similar sort of thing, but even the pinout is different. So they, they, they couldn't even use it in place of this. It would have to be a different circuit board. So that's a bit odd. But anyway, so we're going to check it out. I've got all the equipment here is kind of laid out to check it out. So I've got uh, this meter here, which is going to show us the input voltage. This little meter here, we're going to use it for the current coming out of it. Uh, this meter here is going to be for the output voltage and then I have I just have that little load that I put together I'm going to use that here rather than <coughs> Try to get my big DC load involved for something this uh, trivial um, And I did find uh, I tried to trace out the schematic for it and I could only get so far because there was uh, you know the, there's there's no traces on the back and the traces on the front go to various different places and sometimes you know these coils and there's three of them on here. The coils don't necessarily, I mean, you, you can measure continuity on both sides of the coil, so it, it gets a little bit confusing if you can't see the traces. So what I did is I looked around online, I found this schematic here. Hope that's not too bright. Um, and the only differences were that this capacitor wasn't, is not on this. Um, these two coils here are 47 microhenry, not 33. And this resistor, instead of being 330 ohms, is 270 ohms. Other than that, uh, they're an identical, identical schematic. So it is a little bit unusual. Like if you look up the XL6009 boost converter, and you look up this spec sheet for it, there are a number of co different companies that make it. And uh, you'll find a, a couple of different spec sheets out there, a few of them. And uh, the sample circuits, none of them look like this. So it's, uh, this is some smart engineer somewhere came up with this concept and uh, we're gonna try it out today, see if it works. Okay, so first, what I gotta do is I gotta get some, some wires attached to this. So I'm gonna do that over on my soldering bench and I'll come right back. All right, here we go. So this, these leads here are coming down from uh, my power supply, which I'm going to use as the input voltage. In reality, I'm probably going to use this uh, to boost or buck a, a battery. Yeah, but let's get these, uh, let's get all this hooked up here. And our output, I'll also put this up on a scope to see what kind of noise is coming out of it. Now the nice nice thing about these is as opposed to um, regular switch mode power supplies, although that's what really this is, is that they're, they're not isolated or they don't attempt to be isolated from the input. So there's a, a ground going right through. So we essentially don't have to be concerned about common mode noise. Um, whatever noise is being produced on the output will be differential because uh, it's a straight bus bar straight through here. Okay, um, so let me let me just look at the specs for a second. Okay, so the rated input in this is from uh, 3.6 to 36 volts, and then you should be able to get pretty well any voltage out on the output voltages, but maybe there might be some limitations with this circuit here. So we'll, we'll just twist this knob here until uh, we get strange results. Okay, let me, let me uh, wake this back up again. And wake this back up again. And okay, so here we are. We're ready to go. Uh, I'm going to turn. I'm going to start off here at 10 volts. So we'll get 10 volts going into it. Let's see what we have on the output here. Let's uh, turn this way down, or all the way up as resistance concerned. So we're not going to draw a lot of current off it initially. And I'm not getting anything coming out of it oh okay so we got uh we got a snafu here with the input lead that's that's not connecting very well let me see if i can improve that a little bit 
There we go. All right. Um, here we go. So we got, uh, it looks like we got 1.2598 or 1.26 volts coming out of it. 0 0.002 amps. And going into it, we have 0 0.10 volts and 0 0.009 amps. So I need to get a, an adjusting screwdriver. And we'll begin to turn this potentiometer. Okay, looks like we're at the one end of the uh, adjustment there. Okay, it's coming up quickly now. So let's put it at five volts. We'll do our tests beginning at five volts here. This potentiometer doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to be a real Burns potentiometer. It's got quite a bit of hysteresis in it, which a good Burns potentiometer wouldn't have. So, yeah, that, that's close enough. Okay, so at that, we've got, uh, looks like we're coming up to 100 milliamps on the output. We've got about 7 milliamps on the input. We're at still at 10 volts. So let's put, that's for putting a load on it. So we've got practically no load on the output now. And we'll call that our five volts here. Let's, uh, let's bring it up to a one amp load. This is supposed to be able to handle up to three amps. Now I don't know whether that's on the input or the output, but uh, I would imagine the output would be the more interesting specification. Ooh. Okay, so there we got that. Uh, we've got an amp coming out of it. And we've dropped, uh, what was it, 0 0.06 volts. So that's pretty good regulation, I'd say. And of course, we dropped a little bit on the input side, but I'm going to, I'm going to mess with the input side right now and see what difference that makes on the output. So let's, uh, let's take it up to 15 volts on the input. And the output essentially has not changed. That's pretty good. Um, 20 volts on the input. Okay, it's gone down a tiny little bit on the uh, on the output, but very acceptable. Uh, okay, let's bring it down. Now that's just four volts on the input, and okay, it's not maintaining the output at four volts. Five volts, five volts it does. So I guess that four volts is getting too darn close to that three point six volts. Of course, we have a little bit of drop over the wires here. We're down to three point eight volts. And it's so it's not being able to maintain the output there. But if we bring it up to five volts, we can certainly do that. Okay, I'm going to bring up the output. I'm going to bring up the output to ten volts because uh, so far it's acting pretty much just like a a buck converter. So let me see if I can bring this output up. I've got. 9 volts going into it now. Let's see if we can get 10 volts out of it. Yeah, that's uh, really hard to get in there. Okay. We're going to have to watch our current there a little bit. Okay, we've got 11 volts there. I don't like this little potentiometer. It's uh, it's a little wonky. I think if what I'll probably do, I've got some proper burns versions of these. I'll if I put these into use, I'll probably throw in one of those. Kind of annoying to try and get a decent voltage out of it. Okay, so there we are. We're at about an amp. We're at about ten volts, and we got about nine volts going in. So let's drop that down to eight volts going in. Oh come on. All right, so we've got eight volts going in, 10 volts coming out, seven volts going in, 10 volts coming out. So, okay, it is a buck boost converter and it seems to be working quite well. And it, I'll bring this down to four volts to see if it maintains that. So, yeah, it, we're not getting, we're not getting very good. Uh, six volts going in. It doesn't recover. It, 15 volts, we're getting 10 volts. Go down to 8 volts, we're getting 10 volts. But if it falters, 
There's seven volts, it's good. Six volts, it's good. Five volts, and it falters. So, yeah, we bring it back up to seven volts. Okay, it's coming back up. But this would likely be something that I use to get, uh, you know, I'm thinking the first project I'm going to use is to get a five volt charger in my in my little trailer, which has got a, a 12 volt battery. So the nominal would be 13.2 volts. And if we get this up to 13.2 volts here, and we can turn this down to five volts. So it, it, that would be no problem at all. Okay, let's uh, let's look at the, the noise coming out of it. I'm going to set up the oscilloscope here, and we'll be right back. I just put the oscilloscope across here. I'm not going to get too fancy with it. I'm just going to use a regular probe. Okay, we should have the, the scope up there now. And uh, it looks like we're getting switching frequency here. Say 189 kilohertz, but the documentation says 400 kilohertz. But that's just, I think that's just picking up the, the upper peaks. I'm not sure about that. This, if I bring this down here like this. So it's 360 kilohertz. That's, that's fairly close. Anyway, we're here to look at the noise. And the noise is a peak to peak of 920 millivolts, about a volt. So that's, that's at one amp of current. So let's let's uh, bring that up a little bit. See if we go up to two amps. The two amps of current. It's up to one point five volts, but the RMS value is very low. I mean, I guess that could be that could be taken out with filtration and if you're just using it to charge batteries it doesn't really make any difference I'm just gonna be using that to charge a phone or something let's see if I drop this down to five volts here the pot is the wrong way around you, you turn it towards the right to go down and towards the left to go up that's close enough all right so let me bring that back up to a couple of amps All right, so that's about the, the, the limit I can put through this anyway. And uh, yeah, 1.12 volts, RMS value of 45 millivolts. I'd say that's good. If I'm not powering a sensitive device with it, I say this is fine. And you know, I don't really intend to do that with this particular module. Like I said, I'm thinking of using it just for uh, you know things like charging and stuff like that, and like making power packs and so forth. Okay, I, I think this is pretty good. I, I give it a thumbs up. It seems to work the way it's supposed to work. I can't find anything too terribly wrong with it. It's not as quiet as I'd like it to be, but you know, I could also mitigate that with some filtering. If I was going to use this to power some sort of uh, sensitive device, I could put some filtering on the output. It's got precious little as it is, as you can see in this diagram here. It's got this little uh, coil here and uh, a little capacitor and a capacitor across the coil. So you could do a considerably better job of filtering that if you wanted to. All right, so I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else that you can do with a buck boost module other than test it out to this degree. Um, we have, it's, it is fairly efficient. So I've got uh, 13 volts going into it, five volts coming out of it at 1.6 amps. And it's, uh, it's drawing 780 milliamps on the input. So yeah, it, it is pretty, that is pretty efficient. I wonder if anything here is getting warm. No, nope, nothing here is getting warm. So it's not dissipating a lot of heat in itself. And, uh, well, that's it, folks. I hope you got something out of this. I mean, these are interesting devices. And, you know, you I guess you could design and build your own. But like I say, I mean, I couldn't find a reference circuit for this. I, I just happened upon this. At, yeah, so they basically did the same thing except for a few minor changes and... That's the schematic I got. I would never have been able to come up with that myself, I don't think. So it's nice that these things are available so cheaply. 
But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave another link to this down in the description if you're interested in getting them and playing around, experimenting with it, see if it's any good for you. Uh, but for my purposes, I think it's going to be fine. Thanks for joining me today, folks. We'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, have fun with electronics. Bye-bye.